he basically demanded that I send him my paycheck. Frank made me feel wanted. I still wanted to believe him and I still had cash on hand. So I went to my bank, I withdrew all the money outside of a dollar from my bank account. I took a screenshot of it to show him that I had no money and that I had sent him $680. What's up Seekers? It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. We're back with another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a 50-year-old woman named Christina from Canada who met someone on OkCupid who stole photos from a man named Richard. The two have been communicating for months, but Christina is having doubts about Franklin's true identity after sending him money for offloading shipping containers. As you know, people get their images stolen all the time, and unfortunately, like Christina, Richard was also a victim in this story. Our social catfish team will stop this scammer from stealing any more money from Christina and put a stop to this scam. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Christina. In my spare time, outside of work, I enjoy fishing. In my free time, I, I do travel into the city to go and see live theater, or I spend time at home with my children. I was married for 18 years, and then after that divorce, I was engaged to another fellow. We were together for 12 years. In the last two years since I've been single, I just wanted companionship, somebody to talk to. I am currently not dating anybody at all. I'm home alone while well, I have children in the house, but I'm the only adult here. I work full time. There's no social life. So yes, friendship, companionship, like just somebody to spend some time with, somebody to talk to outside of children somebody to fill that void. So I looked at the online dating app that a friend had referred me to, and that's where I met Frank. When I first met Frank, I found that he was quite charming, just, just a gentleman. He didn't cross any lines. He just was nice in general. It was just a nice conversation. There was no expectations from anybody. It was just getting to know each other. You know, what do you like to do? Um, do you have family? Were you married before? What, what's your occupation? Favorite colors even. He asked me favorite colors. He asked me what my favorite flowers were. He is six feet tall. Um, he looks like possibly a huskier man. Very handsome, uh, clean cut like very well groomed. Initially, Frank came off as a gentleman. He was everything that Christina was interested in and that's what kept her chatting with him every single day. Frank made me feel wanted. Even with our time differences, I, I had my phone under my pillow when I would go to bed so that I could hear when he would message me so that we could just have a brief conversation just about our day. He would start with, you know, how are you today? How's your daughter? How was work? What did you have for breakfast was his biggest question. He always asked me what I had for breakfast. And I kept telling him I don't eat breakfast, but he asked anyways. At that, at the beginning, I was starting to tear up floors in my house and he was concerned with me doing this work myself. Um, at one point he had told me to hire a contractor to finish doing my floors and that he would pay for them to finish doing my floors because he didn't want me to hurt myself. There was never any nicknames. I think one time out of all of our conversations, which were daily for the longest time, he, he called me baby only once. My daughter, she knows of Frank only because he sent flowers to the house. You know, we all want that happily ever after. He seems like he could be my forever. We got along so well. We, we could talk about anything. And then he started asking for money and that all went downhill right quick. Frank's request for money started after a month of Christina communicating with him online. So to put it in perspective, our very first conversation was April 27th. And the first time that he had asked me for money was the first week of June I did send money on June the 14th. That was the first time. 
He told me he was opening up car dealerships in other countries. He had told me in May that he had shipped cars from Seattle to Accra, Ghana. When they arrived over there, he was going over there. And when it came to unloading these containers, they were asking for duty, which he fell short on. So he needed, I think it was $10,000 is what he needed. I sent him $500 Canadian, which went from my account to apparently their account, which he claims they did not get. Frank claimed he never received the $500 that Christina sent to him. He said the wire transfer to this bank account never went through to his account. He told Christina that he needed her to send the wire transfer again, but it didn't stop there. So I resent the 500 to a different bank account that he provided me. That 500 he did in he did receive and told me he received it. I have all their banking information as well, both bank accounts. That was the end of July that he asked for more. He needed another $10,000 or something, $9,000 and had asked me to ask my boss for a loan saying that I needed help. I told him all I had was my paycheck. He basically demanded that I send him my paycheck. I said, I can't, I won't be able to pay bills. I won't make my car payment. I won't make my rent. He said, that's okay. I'll give all this back to you in a couple of days once I sort everything out. And don't worry about it. You won't have to worry about car payments and rent again. Frank was supposedly a businessman with tons of funds. This is why Christina felt comfortable with lending him money. He would frequently poke at Christina's income. Frank told her that it was nothing compared to the amount of money he was bringing home. He then told her that he was hiding the amount of cars that was in the shipment. He was shipping 120 cars, making his payout four times the amount that he initially told Christina about. But he would need a little more money to finish this project and then they could start their life together. Uh, he knows my birth date. Uh, he knows my house address because he sent me flowers. I did give him copies of the receipts of the transfers. I mean, I... I disclosed probably way too much to him, like knowing that I had mutual funds in place. And he did ask me to cash them in and send it to him, which I told him I couldn't do that till I was 50. On my 50th birthday, he sent me a beautiful email wishing me a happy birthday and how he wished that he could be here. And then the next paragraph was, he was sorry that he was still stuck in Ghana. The third paragraph is, can you send me $1,300? I still wanted to believe him and I still had cash on hand. So I went to my bank. I withdrew all the money outside of a dollar from my bank account. I took a screenshot of it to show him that I had no money and that I had sent him $680. So I made it look like I had that money deposited into my account as a paycheck and that I withdrew it all to send it all to him and it left me with a dollar. So he thought that I had nothing left. Um, he's told me that he has a brother and a sister. The car dealership in Seattle, he says he inherited from his father. The one in Toronto, he bought. Until this day, Frank promises to give all of the money back that he borrowed. He also claims he will be coming home soon so they can start a life together. I believed his stories and when he had told me that his ex-wife had taken money out of his bank account and that he had set up security features on his bank account, um, I, I believed him. So when he initially asked me to help him, I didn't think twice about it like, and just sent him what I felt comfortable sending. The last conversation that I had with him was October 1st. He was still said that he needed $1,300 by that Monday. Um, I told him I didn't have it. And even if I did have it, I couldn't get to a bank because I had to work. His response was a half hour out of your day will not get you fired. And if it does get you fired, there's no need to worry about that anymore. Just go send me the 1300. I said, I might have $300 at my house. And he said, well then send that 300 on Monday. If you were to tell me that Frank was real, then I would probably have to apologize to him for calling him ungenuine and, and claiming that he was swindling money out of multiple people. Well, Seekers, we had some work to do. There were so many red flags and we knew there was no way Frank was telling the truth. Christina had her doubts, but we had to get rid of any thought she had left of Frank being who he claimed to be. 
We noticed that most of the photos that Christina had of Frank were of lower resolution, but that wasn't a problem. We popped all of the images into our reverse image search and we were able to find out the truth about this man in minutes. If you or anyone else you know feel like you could be involved in a romance scam, we recommend you use our sponsor's site, socialcatfish.com. Most of the tools we use to bust these scammers can be found here. You can support our team and protect yourself online by picking up a membership for yourself. Next, we looked into this bank that Christina was transferring the money to, and it was in fact a real bank in Ghana. We sent a link to Christina to send to Frank so we could track down his location, but he refused to click on it. Although he didn't click on it, we still felt confident that we had all the information we needed to show Christina that he was a scammer, so we sat down with her to go over everything we found. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. I just wanted to get some updates from you um, as far as what you and Franklin are currently talking about. Nothing. He has never mess. He has not messaged me back. Gotcha. Gotcha. We tried to send the link and unfortunately he didn't click on it. He hasn't read it at all. This guy would not click on the FU gift cards link. After hundreds of videos, we finally ran into someone who knew what the link was. When was the last time you spoke to Franklin? October 2nd now. And what was that conversation like? Um, he had asked me how much money I had in the house, and then he had asked me to send that to him. And I told him that I wasn't going to send it because that's all I had. And the last response I got from him was okay. And then nothing ever again. So where do you think your feelings lie with Franklin today? I was a little bit anxious when you guys had sent me that link to send to him. I was anxious about sending it to him and what was gonna happen, like really nervous. Okay, so Christina, I'd like to walk you through some of the research that we found for this case. Starting off with, you know, the transfer and the banking information, um, we feel that the money that was sent over to this other person is what we know as a money mule. Most likely either accepting money for Franklin or sending money off to someone else. Also, likewise, the flowers that you had received from a person named Nelson, we also feel that that person is a money mule as well. In a romance scam, money mules play one of the biggest parts in the scam. Christina received flowers from Franklin. It's normal for romance scammers to send gifts. The flowers and gifts almost always come from another person in a scam, thinking they're sending flowers for another reason. Here's a quick breakdown. The scammer will make several different profiles with several different aliases. They will find a potential victim and begin building a relationship with them. This is Todd. He thinks he is in an online relationship with a woman named Heather, AKA one of the fake profiles from the scammer. Through Heather's fake profile, the scammer will tell Todd that her mother is sick. Todd will send Heather's mother's flowers as a gift. Christina is then gifted these flowers and thanks Frank for them. This builds trust and the scammer gains more legitimacy through both of his victims. I'd also like to jump into the bank. You know, we looked into Stambic Bank. Um, that's a verified bank. It's a legitimate bank located in Ghana. They also have other locations as well throughout the world. When you received the, the routing number and, you know, how to transfer everything to the bank, did any red flags ring off when you saw that it was to Accra, Ghana? No, because he told me he was there. Got you. He went from Toronto to Seattle, and then he'd ship the cars from Seattle over to Ghana, and that he had messaged me and said that he had to fly over to Ghana, and then that's where he was staying with his friend, who he calls Philip. I went and Googled the bank and they actually had reviews. Everyone had some kind of issue with this bank, rather it be getting the transfer to the bank or the customer service doesn't exist. This bank is real, but let's just say it's not on the up and up. When I first met you, Christina, you said that if Franklin was real, you'd be owing him an apology. Yes. Well, we're here today to tell you that you will not be owing anyone an apology. Okay, good. The real person in the images is a man named Richard. Oh, okay. Oftentimes we find the real person in the images. 
And in this case, we were able to find this person's true identity. And Richard has his own life. He has a business and he unfortunately probably deals with this a lot. Most of the images that Franklin sent you, they were actually found all on his social media. So this person is stealing this person's images and sending you, you know, photos of this guy and using an alias. Gotcha. So even though they were time stamped or date stamped, it wasn't obviously. Last two images that were sent to me were sent to me on my birthday and the images were date stamped. The, those images, the original images are on Richard's social media. It looks like what they did was they went into some very simple program and just wrote that text down there. I don't even think you need to use Photoshop to, to timestamp those the way they did. Time stamping photos is a common tactic scammers use. You can easily timestamp a photo through your smartphone. Frank took the photo of Richard and put the date at the bottom of the photo. This made Christina believe that the photos were actually taken that day. Did, did we ever find out about like when he phoned me, that phone number? Because it, it came back as a Seattle number. Yeah, so that did pop up as a, a Seattle number, but it was also a VoIP number, which is an internet phone number. Okay, so if I called that number back, it would be him that would answer, possibly. Possibly. VoIP phone numbers are free for anyone to use. They can change their number to match any location in the world the scammer is claiming to be in. You can figure out if you're talking to someone with a VoIP phone number by running a number search on our site. It will tell you right away if someone is using one of these numbers. And if they are, it's a huge red flag and you're probably talking to a scammer. I appreciate everything that you've done. And like I said, you're not owing anyone an apology today. <laughs> That's the best part. I guess part of me was hoping that he was a real person because he kept saying that the money would come back, he'd give it back. And then I always kept saying to myself that, no, you're not getting it back, so don't even worry about it. Um, and then I'm happy to know that my instincts were right and that I stopped it and I didn't send more money. I, I appreciate everything for sure because anything that I looked for, I couldn't find anything. Like the Franklin accuracy never even came up. If I Googled the name, I couldn't find anything. Day by day, that's all it is now. No more money. I've already told them all I have no money. I'm broke. So. <laughs> this scam is officially over. Christina has blocked Frank and moved on. He still claims that he will meet with Christina after the cars are sold and pay her all of her money back. Christina is now taking a break from online dating and spending more time with her kids. We turned over all the information that we had on the bank and Frank to the authorities in Ghana. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.